When we talk about the guns of August, you know, we're really talking about primarily one gun in August, and that was a, uh, a Browning you know, semi-automatic 32 caliber 1910. Uh, in the hands of a, uh, a member of the, uh, the Black Hand Order, uh, Gavrilio Princep, he was able to, uh, to assassinate almost uh, literally by dumb luck uh, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie uh, while they visited the independent nation of, of Serbia uh, from neighboring Austria. This occurred in, in, in June of, uh, of 1914 and really the, uh, the two months that it took between the assassination of the Archduke and uh, the machines of diplomacy uh, and, uh, to, to, to grind on in the beginning of military mobilization, it took two months uh, to get that war machine uh, going. And you would think that had anybody, anybody at that time been able to look four years in the future and seen what had happened as a result of those few little rounds of 32 caliber ammo being fired out of that Browning, you, you might imagine that they would have worked harder to find some kind of more peaceful solution uh, than what, uh, what transpired on the, uh, on the Belgian frontier in August of 1914. Early in the war, uh, the Germans are said to have mistaken uh, British musketry uh, for machine guns because the uh, soldiers that they faced on some particular occasion were firing their Lee Enfields uh, so quickly that the Germans uh, did not realize that in fact they were facing bolt action rifles. In infantry training uh, prior to World War I, the British were using some of the lessons learned from the Boer War. One of the training things that the, the, the British emphasized was on being able to get 15 aimed rounds in a minute. It's called the mad minute. The idea was that you started off with the 10 that you had in your magazine, but they wanted to make sure that you knew and you were capable of pulling out that extra one, getting those five in, and then getting that last five rounds in. The Lee Enfield was a short rifle. It was a compromise between a long infantry rifle and a cavalry carbine. Uh, the British recognized that you didn't need that much barrel. And what they ended up doing was creating one rifle for infantry and for cavalry. The uh, Lee Enfield had a, a, a nose cap uh, on its front that gives it a very distinctive look uh, with a circular bayonet lug uh, that, that attaches a 17 inch sword bayonet. Initially, uh, the gun had a magazine cutoff uh, built into the right side of the receiver, and what that would allow is single loading of uh, cartridges. Uh, an individual rifleman could put one cartridge in at a time. Uh, the Lee Enfield uh, was also the only standard rifle that had a turned down bolt. The bolt handle was, the knob on the bolt was placed very low and quite close to the trigger guard, and a trained rifleman had only to uh, flip his wrist upward and, uh, and palm the bolt up and back and could quickly close it again. Uh, nobody else seems to have figured that out. Uh, the French, maybe they were excessively budget-minded, I don't know, but they, they always insisted on trying to upgrade old guns rather than uh, starting with a clean sheet of paper and developing uh, new ones. Uh, the Berthier uh, rifle, which was a pretty good gun, is nonetheless a development of much earlier designs. The standard infantry rifle of the French forces was the 1886 Lebel, uh, but the 1890 adoption of the Berthier, uh, the Berthier rifle, a Mannlicher Berthier rifle, really kind of like a Lebel with the bolt turned sideways. Uh, it was adopted in 1890 for cavalry use, and eventually long rifles were produced as well. Uh, the Berthier, uh, uh, early on, could hold three rounds. Later on, that was increased to five rounds in a stripper club. These were made at the, all the, the French arsenals, and mainly at uh, Chateau, but they're also made at uh, Toul, they're made at Saint Etienne. And um, during the war, they also contract with Remington. 
Uh, Remington makes up a number of these. And then these were the rifles that were issued to the African-American troops who saw combat with French units as part of the 93rd Division of the uh, American Expeditionary Forces. When Austria invaded Serbia, uh, they did so with the Steyr Model 1895 rifle. Uh, it was a straight pull, unusually, uh, designed by Ferdinand uh, von Mandlicker. The Austrians, uh, true to the, the rigid military thinking of the day, uh, insisted on adopting in a long rifle that was, uh, again, way too long and, uh, and too heavy and, and unwieldy. The Model 1895 Monolica rifle was unique, really, amongst the rifles of the world in that it was a straight pull and it simply came back and forth like this. They did try to reduce the weight that the rifleman would have to, would have to carry around. Uh, the 95 Manlicker is notable in the, uh, how diminutive it is. The action is almost dainty. Well, the rifle was manufactured in a, a unique ca caliber. It was the uh, 8x50 rimmed Monlicker. And like all of the Monlicker uh, designs, it had a sheet steel charger that was an, actually an unblocked clip. At that time, uh, it must be remembered that Austria was much larger than just Austria today. It was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a very large land mass, and the entire Austrian-Hungarian uh, army and navy used this. Joining the Serbians, their allies, the Russians, the Imperial Russian government, a uh, huge land army equipped with what was that nation's first smokeless powder small bore rifle, and that was the model 1891 Mosan Nagant. The three line rifle was made for, designed for, and used by uh, peasant armies very effectively. It was the AK 47 of 1891. It's a very simple rifle to make. It's a two-piece bolt, unlike the Mauser bolt. It's a, it's a two-piece with a detachable uh, bolt head, much the same as the Lee rifle for the English. Again, the most effective uh, variant of that design would have been the cavalry carbine. But the uh, Tsar's uh, generals, uh, again, uh, likewise, uh, infected with, with Napoleonic war thinking, uh, viewed it as a, a great handle for a, for a bayonet. Imperial Russia had some very archaic uh, terms for measurement. Uh, three lines, uh, meaning a line essentially being a tenth of an inch. Uh, was, was the caliber, 30 caliber, 7.62. Uh, it was a, a large cartridge, uh, it was a rimmed cartridge, and uh, the sights on the Model 1891 were measured in arshins, uh, and it was a very crude rifle, it was very um, uh, robust. Of all of the uh, rifles that the great powers entered World War I with, the Mosin Nagant was I think the oldest and lasted the longest. It was still in service as late as Vietnam.